All right, so um, let me share my screen. So I want to show you how we factor by grouping. So let's do it. Um, <clears throat> How do I factor by grouping? So I hope you saw the video that I did before where we factored by GCF greatest common factor. And the importance of that video is how to factor out a binomial that is a GCF because that's what this is all about. So I'll show you what I mean. So I have a situation here where I have one, two, three, four terms. Um, and you want four terms when you're doing factor by grouping. So. Let me write this. We are factoring by grouping. Now, again, mathematicians, we're not really like fancy with our names. Factoring by grouping is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to group stuff. So um, <clears throat> take two terms. This will be my group one, right? Group one, and this will be my group two, group two. Let's look at group one. In group one, what is in common between the two terms? So once you split your um, situation into two groups, right? Four terms, you have to have four terms and then one group and two, group, two groups. Group one has two terms. What is the GCF amongst these two terms? What do they have in common? Well, X to the third and five or a negative five X squared, they both have an X squared in common. Just group one. Once I take out X squared from group one, then I have an X minus a five. Well, let's double check that. If I distribute x squared here, x squared times x is x to the third, x squared times negative five is negative five x squared. I get, you know, I go back to these two terms in group one. This is just group one. Bring this plus sign down, plus. Let's look at group two now. Ignore the other group. Imagine this is not here. Just look and focus here. What do I have in common between the three x and the negative 15? Both of them have a three in common. That's the GCF there. And when I factor out a three from group two, I'm left with X minus five, right? If I were to distribute three here, I get a three X minus 15. I have the same thing that I had here. And if I were to distribute each of these, then I, you know, I go back to the exact polynomial that I started with, right? But what do you notice that just happened when I separated my four terms into two groups and then I went and focused on a GCF in each group. Now look at what they have in common. Now, again, if you look at my other um, video, this is, this is term one. I want to think about it like this. This whole thing is kind of one term. This is term two. And both of these terms have now a binomial in common. So the factor by grouping works as long as once you do these two groups, and you factor out the GCFs from each, it only works if you have a binomial in common after that, which I do. An X minus five is in common between this whole big thing here and this whole big thing here. So I am allowed to factor out the binomial X minus five. And when I take it out of this group here, this the situation here, then I'm left with just X squared plus, I take the X minus five from here and I'm left with a three, nothing in common. Here's my final factor case. Now, if I want to, you know, check my result, like you feel like there's a lot of steps or I'm confused, did I do it right? Multiply this out and see if we get the same thing we started with. So there should never be a incorrect, incorrectly factored situation because you can always check it by multiplying and see if it goes back to the thing, same thing you started with. So let's multiply this. I'm gonna distribute the X. X times X squared is X to the third. X times three is positive three X. Negative five distributed. I don't wanna write this every time because I don't wanna mess up my whole situation. But I did here, okay. <laughs> negative five times X squared is negative five X squared. And negative five times three is negative 15. And if I put this in standard form, then I have the same exact thing that I started with, which means that yes, I factored this correctly and the method that I used was factor by grouping. So exactly what it sounds like, factor by what? Grouping. So that means you're gonna group. You're gonna group stuff. 
we create two groups, take out the GCF in each group, and then look for a common binomial, right? Look for a common binomial. That's, that's how factor by grouping works. If you don't have that common binomial after you, you know, do this process here, it's not gonna work. Not every single polynomial that has four terms can be factored by grouping. There are multiple methods that we have to factor polynomials. This is just one and it only works for specific type of polynomials that end up in this situation with a common binomial. Muff terms. Let's do another example. So here we go. I got this situation. I don't know, all this stuff here. 4x squared plus 20x minus 3xy minus 15y. I have four terms. Let's try to factor by grouping. I don't know if it's going to work until I try it. Let's try it. If it doesn't, then I might need another method to factor this, which you'll learn later. But let's try it. Let's see. Group one. Let's group it. Group two. And let's do group one first. All right. So group one, just focus here. I am ignoring this. This is like gone. Just focus here. What is in common? Um, for the moment, I'll do a circle. I'll erase it after. What's in common between these two terms? A 4 and a 20. Both have a 4 in common. x squared and x. So they both at least or at most have an x. And when I factor out a 4x from here, I'm left with just an x plus. I factor out a 4x here, I'm left with just a 5. So if I were to distribute this, back through, I would have group one as it was initially. So double check that. I'm going to erase this for now. Okay, so group one is done. Let's look at group two. Here's group two. Hold on. I think I'm going to erase this after. Group two, what do they have in common? So I have a negative 3xy and a negative 15y. So they both have a negative and they both have a three and they both have a y. So I can factor out the GCF from group two as a negative three y. When I do that from group, you know, from the first term in group two, I took out the negative three and I took out the y, so I'm left with just an x. Now I took the negative out, so this is plus, and I'll show you in a second when I distribute it back through. Be very careful with that. I took a three, so I'm left with a five, and I took a y, so that's it. If I were to distribute this back through, it's the same thing that I started with. Negative three y times x is negative three x y. Negative three y times positive five is negative 15 y. So be very careful. When you are factoring out a negative from group two, inside the parentheses, this sign will change. So you can always double check by, you know, um, distributing back through, make sure you have what you initially did. Now, again, the goal behind this was to see if I have a common binomial. Here's, you know, group one, group two, and both groups have a common binomial, x plus five, which means that now I can factor out the binomial, x plus five. I could take out that common binomial, which means factor by grouping works for this particular polynomial. I took the x plus five from here, I'm left with four x. I took the x plus five from here, I'm left with negative three y, and I'm factored by grouping. How do I check it? Multiply it out, see if you have the same thing you started with. Right, what's the point? Group them. You should have first one, two, three, four terms in order to do factor by grouping. Group them. Two terms at a time, group one, group two, GCF in each group, and then factor common binomial. Um, I'll write that in a second. So let's, uh, let's do it again. And actually, as I do it, I'll write it out. So step one, let's just check, do I have four terms? If I do, then I'll go to step two. One, two, three, four terms, good. Set up two groups, all right? So let's set up two groups. Group one, group two. 
Okay. Step three, take out GCF in each group. Take out GCF in each group. So let's do it. Group one, group one. What is my GCF? Let's see. Now X squared and AB, there's nothing in common here. Well, <clears throat> remember I said that factor by grouping might not work for every single situation, polynomial that has four terms. But that doesn't mean this won't work here. Let's see what happens. Now, these two terms in group one do not have a GCF. So what I'm gonna do is let's factor out a one. I'll show you what I mean. I took a one out of these two, which technically doesn't change those two terms, right? Okay, let's see what happens. Um, let's look at, oops, sorry, group two. Group two. Um, I have a negative AX and a negative BX. So they have a negative and an X in common. So let's see if this is gonna work. When I take out a negative X, what do I have left? Well, I took a negative X from here. So I'm just left with an A. I took a negative X here. So I'm left with a plus B. And what's the point of, of factor by grouping? Once you take the GCF out in each group, you should be able to factor out common binomial. If you can't factor out a common binomial, then factor by grouping doesn't work. Now, if you look at this, it doesn't look like I have a common binomial. So you might think factor by grouping doesn't work here. I'm gonna try one more thing. I'm gonna rearrange these terms. So what I mean by that is, let's say I have, let's do AB first minus AX, we'll see what happens. Um, and then we'll do plus an X squared minus a BX. Let's look at this and see if this works. Okay, um, make sure I did this right. I have an AB with a positive in front an AX with a negative, X squared positive, and negative BX. Now, I'm changing my groups. Now group one is this, and group two is this. I changed my groups. I'm allowed to do that because of the fact that this is still the same polynomial because I can add in any order. Well, let's see if this helps me create the factor by grouping situation. In group one, what is in common? In group one, I have an A in common. So I'm gonna factor out the A. So then when I factor out the A, what's left? B minus X. Let's look at group two. What does group two have in common? They have an X in common plus an X. When I take out an X, What's left? I have an X minus B. Now, double check, right? If I were to distribute the A back through here, I have the same thing that I had initially in group one. If I distribute the X, I have the same thing in group two. Now look at this. I am much closer to a common binomial. This one says B minus X, and this one says X minus B. This tells me that factor by grouping is going to work, but I have to pull a special algebra trick. Factoring out, this is a special algebra trick. Special. Factor out a negative one. This is what's gonna change this side here. I'm gonna factor out a negative one. Um, now, before I do that within this problem, I wanna show you what happens. Let's assume that I have a three minus X. Random example. And I wanna show you the factor out negative one situation. When I take a negative one from this, what happens is it changes the signs, right? If I were to distribute this back through, it's the same thing that I started with. 
But what I would really write, uh, want to represent this as instead of negative three plus X is X minus three. Notice that I started with three minus X and I ended with a negative one with an X minus three inside. So if I have a binomial with a minus in the middle and I factor out a negative one, it switches the terms in the binomial. So for example, four minus X, if I take out the negative one, then I end up with X minus four. Um, five minus X, if I take out the negative one, I end up with X minus five. It kind of switches the two terms. Legally, algebra is legal. If I have a Y minus X and I take out a negative one, it makes it an X minus Y. This is factoring out a negative one. A special factoring situation that pops up sometimes to help you with situations like this, where you could actually continue, even though it might look like you can't. These binomials are not the same, but the only difference between them is the switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out a negative one, which is gonna go in the front here. And when I do that, it's gonna switch the terms, make it an X minus B. Let's see if that's true. If I distribute this, it's a negative AX plus AB, which is what I have here, negative AX plus AB. Let me bring this down. So I use the special algebra trick to create, what do I have? Now I have a common binomial. So now I can actually continue to factor by grouping and take out the common binomial, which is an X minus B. And when I do that, I'm left with a negative A, take out an X minus B plus X, which can be represented like this. Double check, multiply it out and see if you get the correct answer. This was a very special problem, why? First of all, because I had to rearrange the terms to change the groups that I have or had so that I can see if that common binomial appears. And it almost did. And then I needed this extra algebra trick, factoring out a negative one to create the common binomial to continue to factor by grouping. This is a special problem. It's a good problem. Let me know if I need to do more of them. I just wanna do one more quick problem, um, which just in case, I wanna show you a situation like this. Um, first things first, I have one, two, three, four terms. So factor by grouping might work here. Do I have to rearrange them? Eh, I'll look at it and see. Um, <clears throat> but before I do that, I notice that every single term has a GCF in common. Every single term has an X squared. I actually have a GCF before I even factor by grouping. And when I take out the X squared, I'm left with X to the third plus two X squared minus nine X minus 18. I had to first take out the GCF if there was one, in this case, there was. In my other examples, there was not. I take out the GCF of every single term before I even start to think about factor by grouping or whatever factoring method it is that you're using. In this case, factor by grouping. You're always starting with the GCF. So they had a GCF before I even factor by grouping. Now I can create my groups. Let me bring down the GCF and focus here. I'm gonna ignore this for a second. Group one, I'm gonna put a bracket. Group one has an X squared in common between these two terms. When I take out the X squared, I'm left with an X plus two. Group two has a negative nine in common. When I take out a negative nine, I'm left with an X plus two, right? Distribute into group one up here to see if you have the same thing, distribute. You know, to see if you have the same thing. Another rem uh, reminder, 
If you factor out a negative from group two, then this sign changes. The nice thing about this is I don't have to do any manipulation. I already have the common binomial there. Let's bring down the X word. And so I could factor out the common binomial, which will leave me with just X squared minus nine. And technically I'm done. Now, hopefully you guys saw my other special factoring method, which is a difference of squares. Because you might notice that all of a sudden, let me put that in red. A difference of squares popped up. If I'm factoring completely, I can't stop until every single fact factoring method is you know, gone. Every single special factoring case is not there. I took out a GCF. I was able to factor by grouping. I did that. And then all of a sudden, a difference of squares popped up, x squared minus nine, which can factor into an x plus three and an x minus three. I actually factor this exact example in my difference of squares video. If you wanna see that, go there so you know how to factor a difference of squares. Bring down the x plus two, bring down my x squared. And this is a completely factored situation. If you are asked to factor completely, you need to go until every single situation is done. There's no other factor in case available. If you can get to what we call these are linear factors, then get there. So this was a good example too. Not only was there GCF initially, but after I factored by grouping, a special factor in case popped up, a difference of squares, which means I had to continue to completely factor. So this video, you know, this, this video has a lot of stuff in it. Yes, it has a basic factor by grouping, but it also had in this example, if the basic factor by grouping doesn't work, maybe I have to change my groups to get it to work. If I have a situation where I have, you know, close common binomials, you know, the only difference is like they're switched with a negative in the middle, then this special case factor out a negative one is gonna help me with that. Or I start and I see a GCF initially, and then I see if I could factor by grouping. And I do, I can factor by grouping, but then, oh my gosh, another factoring method came up, a difference of squares. This happens. This is completely factoring. This is, you, you wanna to get to that point where you recognize these situations so that you can go and um, finish up. So 